Hey YouTube, it's Kyle, the War on Modder, and I promised from the video series from the toolbox that we are going to be showing you how to actually install Frix X's um, ADXL results that you can actually use and get within Fluid or Mainsail. It gives us some really cool uh, macros, axis shaper, belt shaper, uh, excite axis at frequency, things that you need to help diagnose some issues with your belting and resonance as you see here. Boom, bam, there's the dynamite. Let's get into this. In the description, I have two links. One is the actual Clippian main fork from Frix X. And what you're gonna wanna do is go to code and download the zip. Once that is downloaded, you're going to extract it using whatever method you use to extract it. Once that is complete, we're going to um, look for a few things that we need to install. So I'm doing what I call the no nonsense install. So the second link is the IS underscore workflow, input shaper workflow. What we need to do is actually get the ADXL results folder into our configuration. So if you right click and open new tab, it's gonna give us the um, roadmap. So Clippian ADXL results. So I am in Clippian main and I want ADXL results folder. So this is here, you're going to do a picture in picture kind of thing. And in your main configuration, where all your things are, you're going to drag and drop this folder in here and it will look like this. And we can compare um, the information in here. The git keeps need to stay there, so don't do anything with that. Now let's move on to the next part. So the second part here is we need to copy the input shaper calibrate dot configuration. So we're going to copy and paste all of this information. If you are like me and you have a macros folder and you wanna keep things clean and tidy, go ahead and dump it in there. As you see here, I have already done that. Um, at the very bottom, you're gonna save and restart. If you don't have a macros, that's fine. You can put it at the bottom of your printer.cfg file and that will suffice as well. Once that is done, we're going to have to install the gcode shell command.py. And the easiest way to do this is using the Clipper installation and update helper, Kiau, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to use putty. So I'm going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi right now. Boom, bam. If you haven't installed this, you're going to do step one, copy this, right click in the console and hit enter, it'll do its thing. Once that's done, you're gonna do the second one. And from this point on, all you have to do is come here and grab this guy and paste it in and hit enter. Now we want to hit the number four for advanced and then eight for the G code shell command. Now I've already done this, so I don't need to do it again, but you do if you're following this tutorial. Now the next step is to add the scripts folder. And again, we are going to look for it here. So it is literally just scripts laid out easy for you. So you're going to come back to your configuration files and you're going to drag and drop the scripts folder in there. And what you wanna do at that point is do type restart in the console, is what I like to do to kind of just refresh everything. The next section of this is making sure that it all works. So you can SSH back into your Raspberry Pi. I did not have any luck with this line of code, but it might work for you. So you wanna make the scripts executable using SSH. When in the folder, CD printer data, so you can use this right here. Copy that, paste that, and it should give us this. And then you're going to copy this and paste it in there and run that. 
Once that's done, you are golden and able to move on. So this right here, this new section, we want to copy this and you're going to actually place this in the printer configuration file as I already did here. I did this towards the top um, because it's part of the include stuff. In my mind, you're going to save and close. At this point, it makes sense to go ahead and issue a restart command. And once Clipper's up and going, you need to do a few things. Number one, you need to do a home. So G28 in the console and hit enter. Let your build plate or tool head find its X, Y, and Z axes. And then under tools, you're going to issue a quad gantry level. You need to home in quad gantry level every single time before you do any kind of input shaper calibrations or the results will be skewed and you'll be forever chasing lines on a graph like I seem to be currently. What they suggest you do is a axis shaper calibration to see where you are, what your results are. The axis shaper is under ADXL results and input shaper and your resonances will be here. Then the next thing to do is to do a belt shaper. And once the belt shaper is done, after you run this guy here, your results are going to be in here. So here's my belt shaper. Now under this here, he did give us a really good um, documentation on how to read and interpret the input shaper system here. And this is a great read. So you read through this, you can understand a little better how the input shaper is working, what it's looking for, and give you an idea of where things are going wrong. Another great place, if you guys aren't... Um, if you guys, if your Voron hasn't been serialized, I seriously encourage you to become a member of the Voron Discord community and get your printer serialized. Then you can get into fancy areas that we're not allowed to talk about because it's Fight Club. And rule number one is to not mention Fight Club. However, I will say that there is a nifty new thing that opens for serialized Voron people such as myself that we can discuss and get help with for their input shape settings. That would be the place to go and just ask the community and people will definitely help teach you how to use the graphs. The reason I'm not showing graphs and talking about it right now is I am still in training. I'm definitely a Padawan with this stuff. I am trying to learn and understand what this stuff means and figure out where there are issues. So I hope that you've been able to follow this guide and get this installed. And if you like the content, wouldn't you mind liking and subscribing to my channel? I'm trying to always come up with new content that is good and full of information and some tutorials and whatnot. But anyway, uh, again, I'm Kyle the Voron Modder, and we will talk to you later.